Welcome to the fifth week of Explore the Bible, but more importantly, welcome to 2022. Or maybe you're still watching this at the end of 2021. You're, you're one of those early uh, watchers, you know, and you're early in the week. We're still in December, but this is the first Sunday of 2022. Excited to have 2021 in the rearview mirror. Looking forward to the new year, what God's going to do this next year. And we're going to be continuing the book of Ezekiel. And what better way to start off the year than with an extremely depressing passage? <laughs> you know, what a great way to get things rolling. So before we dive into that, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, share it with others. Uh, let us know how God's using it in your life. We appreciate that. You can watch on YouTube and Rumble, as well as we put it on our Facebook page every week. So let's dive into Ezekiel 28. Son of man, lament for the king of Tyre. Okay, there were several nations that had that God had used to punish the nation of Israel for their rebellion. Okay, so God often used other nations to exert punishment on Israel as, as a way of disciplining the nation to bring them back into fellowship. And so during those times, those nations would have uh, military success, they would have financial success, economic success, but they often, as Tyre does, uh, don't realize that that success comes because they have actually been used by God uh, over Israel and they are a tool that the Lord is using and they think it's all because of them, not because of how the Lord God is using them. And that is the case here in Tyre. And so it's right this lament. He says, give this lament for the king of Tyre, a, a lament is is a sad song you know we got a we got a sad song for the king of tyre you say this to him this is what the lord god says you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in eden the garden of god every kind of precious stone covered you carnelian topaz and diamond beryl onyx and jasper lapis lazuli turquoise and emerald your mountings and settings were crafted in gold they were prepared on the day you were created you were an anointed guardian cherub for i had appointed you you were in the holy mountain of god you walked among the fiery stones from the day you were created you were blameless in your ways until wickedness was found in you this this song this lament for the king of tyre praises him and, and gives him, you know, you had everything going for you. You had the seal of approval. Things were just great. You know, you were being blessed at all these ways. And, and he's, there is a sense here, okay, I mean, there's kind of an idea of, uh, you see a little bit of picture of Adam, right? You were in Eden, the garden of God. Uh, you see this, the beauty that he had, all this, the perfection that he had. That there, it's He's not talking about Adam. He's talking about the king of Tyre, but he is, there is this, comparison this this uh, metaphor being used about you know you had everything it was all there right you were rich you had everything was good for you but the Lord is in control and you forgot that the Lord was in control you thought this was all you he said you had everything from the day you were created you were blameless in your ways I mean everything looked perfect until wickedness was found in you everything was great until it wasn't, you know. There is this picture of, of them thinking they've done it all for themselves, but they had not. God had blessed them greatly, and, and the wickedness that was in them came out. Th through the abundance of your trade, you are filled with violence and you sinned. Okay, financial, economic wealth, you're getting tires right on the... On the um, Mediterranean Sea, you know, it's a port city. You've got a lot of great things happening, a lot of trade that happens there. But you are filled with violence and you sinned. So I expelled you in disgrace from the mountain of God and banished you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud because of your beauty. For the sake of your splendor, you corrupted your wisdom. So I threw you down to the ground. I made you a spectacle before the kings. Well, here it is. The Lord is saying, all right, Everything looked great, but on the inside, things were happening, and we knew that was happening. And, and the truth is, is that you were filled with violence, and 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 you sinned. That that you had this idea, your heart was proud because of your beauty. You thought it was you, not God, and and you became prideful in the things you had, and prideful in who you thought you were, 
And, and ultimately, God is sovereign over every nation. God is in charge over every nation. And certainly, that was true for the king of Tyre. And so, for the sake of your splendor, you corrupted your wisdom. You wanted your fame. You wanted to exalt your beauty. And in doing so, your wisdom was corrupted. You abandoned wisdom. And so I threw you down to the ground and I made you a spectacle before the kings. The Lord's judgment comes on everyone and we should not think that just because someone has been successful or some nation has become powerful that that will always exist or, or that, that um, God will not bring judgment on everyone and just because you're you're doing well doesn't mean that God has favored you and will excuse or overlook your sin. That is certainly the case with Tyre. You profaned your sanctuaries by the magnitude of your iniquities in your dishonest trade. So I made fire come from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of everyone watching you. All those who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have become an object of honor, of horror, and will never exist again. You profaned your sanctuaries by the magnitude of your iniquities, dishonest trade. And so they were consumed from within. You see this? The fire came from within you and it consumed you. It wasn't the outside uh, enemy that attacked you. You consumed yourself. You destroyed your own selves. Now the Lord was involved in that. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of everyone watching. Everyone was appalled at you. You've become an object of horror that will never exist again. You, you won't regain that. We should be very careful. We should be very careful not to, to fall into the trap of thinking that, that because we have a lot, God is pleased with us. Because we are successful in the measure of the world that God will overlook our sin, our rebellion, our anger, our bitterness, our hatred, our violence, our murder, our unrighteousness. We should not fall into that trap. But this is what the Lord God says. Here's the promise to Israel. When I gather the house of Israel from the peoples where they are scattered, I will demonstrate my holiness through them in the sight of the nations, and they will live in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. They will live there securely, build houses and plant vineyards. They will live securely when I execute judgments against all their neighbors who treat them with contempt. Then they will know I am the Lord their God. The nation has been scattered by these other nations that have conquered them, right? And, and these other nations think they're high, but the Lord's promise is, listen, Israel, I'm going to regather you. And those other nations will suffer for their sin, right? I will demonstrate my holiness through them in the sight of the nations, and they will live in their own land. There's this, okay, God's holiness will be shown. He will make his holiness known, which means he will judge everyone. He will judge the nations. Do not think that God will just allow his holiness to be spit on, that he won't show who he is, right? And you talk about, look, he says, I will give, and I love this word, securely, right? They will live there securely. They will live securely when I execute judgments against all their neighbors who treat them with contempt. These other people that treated them with contempt, that hated them, tire in these other nations, they will have judgment executed against them. And then they, all of them, Israel and all those other nations, will know that I am the Lord. Especially Israel will know I am the Lord their God. I am God. Now, I think, you know, one thing we ought to grab out of this is, look, God's going to get his judgment made known. His holiness will be exhibited, and we can either be in on it on this side or we'll be in on it on the other side. It's when in Philippians, it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That will happen. 
Now, you can bow now or you can bow then, but you're going to bow sooner or later because the Lord will make his holiness known. And do not think that his his um, mercy at this point or his um, patience at this point means that he won't do it. He will. Do not think that because I've gotten away with it this long, I'll get away with it forever. It won't happen. The Lord will show his holiness one day. Whew. Happy New Year. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. God bless you, man. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful that you do. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Let us know what you think. Watch on Rumble. Um, watch on Facebook, however you do it. God bless you. We'll see you next time.